Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it's Bucky, you're joined by... What up guys, it's David here, and we have... It's me, it's me, it's Ian Stoby. You looked really panicked there. <laughs> no, not at all. It's like they're looking at me. <laughs> ah! They want my attentions. What do, what do I say? <laughs> well, god damn, that was a monster episode we just did. That was pretty brutal. But you know what? We didn't fall out really that much. I know, it was disappointing. <laughs> I kind of thought, like... There was no brawls, no the Getting beaten to death, or no, no, I and how come how come it was so civil? Yeah, hmm, and not a war. No, yes. <laughs> interesting. Could it be? It maybe was a civil war. It just wasn't a very. It was. It, it was like the Avengers skirmish. Yes, it was. Yeah, are and we still there? friends? Depends how hard you hit me. Are we still having dinner tomorrow night? Maybe, but now you've mentioned it in front of him, probably not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because he'll just be like, "Can I come?" I'd be like, no. Where's my invite? Exactly. See, he's already started. Yeah, but you don't put out. <laughs> You're always like, I don't do blowjobs. And we're like, okay, fuck. <laughs> nope, nope, my bum hole's a one-way shoot. Okay, get out. You know? There's certain requirements for the new team. I'm out. Yeah, he's he, out. He likes the sound of his farts too much. Doesn't want to lose that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so if you're not quite sure what we're talking about, not the very, not the aforementioned topic, the one previous, we were alluding to the MCU movie review series and the fact that we just ranked all the films in order, so we re-ranked them all, and there'll be an article going on the website relatively soon Yeah, give, give the podcast time to be listened to first, and yeah. then a supporting article. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So if you want to know where we'd rank Ant-Man, Iron Man 3, Guardians 2, Spidey Homecoming, you want to go check out that podcast, which is the one just below this one. But this one is going to be all about Game of Thrones, and in particular, Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 2. <laughs> Possibly loads of spoilers. Possibly loads of spoilers. Titled Stormborn, I really, really thought this was a great second episode for the season. Yeah. Just to set the, set the sort of tone straight off, I enjoyed this episode. How did you feel about the episode? I liked it. Okay. I must admit, I am kind of. Well, we're two episodes in, and I'm kind of digging this season more than the start of last season. Last season felt like a lot of fillers. Yeah, yeah, yeah until I agree. the big climax. I yeah. like this season better than last season, but that's not saying much. Um, I. As I was telling the guys earlier, I've been taking extensive notes where I've been watching the two episodes that have aired. And I think that's impacted my enjoyment of actually sitting and watching the show. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to change how I do this. But it was pretty good. But let's talk about it a little bit. So we're going to go with a little rundown of everything that happened in the episode. And then kind of just chat about these scenes with you. See what you all think. Yep. So we start off this episode, which is called Stormborn, I believe, yes? Yes, Stormborn. And we're at Dragonstone. Is that right? Dragonstone is where it starts. So that was the the castle that you seen Daenerys going into last time. It's the castle that you seen Stannis Baratheon in before. Yes. In prior seasons, when he was being advised by the Red Witch, the Red Priestess, Red Witch, whatever you want to call her, and Sir Davos, and you know all that sort of the stuff. The Red Woman, I think that she gets called most of the time. Right. So the Red Woman. Or Melisandre, yeah, if you want to go for it. You, you see them in their the war room. What, yes. What would have been the war room? Yeah. But it is with the yep. table they seem to like their maps in this season but I think that's because they're having to think out they, and it makes they it easier for us what, to see yeah and they all know war is coming as well so mm-hmm. they're planning being, it out being you tactful you've yep. seen in the last episode you um, Cersei Cersei mapping you know getting a map drawn you see them sitting around theirs so yeah it makes a lot of, it makes a lot of sense and it's also a good way a good um, <coughs> set piece well yeah it's a good visual I was going to say it's a good set piece for having um, various kings and queens of different lands to gather around and kind of talk over. And that's that's one of the scenes I did enjoy a lot, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So the scene starts off with um, Daenerys and Tyrion and I believe Grey Wolf and... Grey Wolf, Missandei and Varys. Yes, they're all standing there in front of, well, around the... Uh, the war room table and something that I thought was quite interesting was just seeing all of the characters but more to the point Daenerys shrouded in darkness with rain mm-hmm. 
because we've only seen her in like bright yeah. fucking light sand heat yep it's Ugh. it's almost like it's given a shift in tone yeah you know um, she's kind of went from being out of, well, I was going to say bright and happy but you know what I mean I, being, I, I get what you're saying there's yeah. more darkness and foreboding but and it's it's Absolutely. almost like Westeros is already bringing her down. You know, it's it's like Westeros is so it's, toxic. It's like the weather's matching her mood or yeah. her new personality that's actually starting to come through. Yeah. I think yeah. her clothing quite reflects that as well. It's all dark. She, yeah, it's all dark. It's, it's yeah. All, she's gone like the way of the Sansa. I feel like her clothing was all white when we first met her. Yeah. And she was this kind of pure, innocent little girl mm-hmm. who's maybe 12 in the books yeah that was Cal Drogo you big pervert um, and she's virginal and she, she kind of she looks at everything like she's looking for the best in people and she even defends her brother at that point in time can you imagine her trying to defend her brother and his actions now oh she would she would just kill him straight away she would have him done yeah she'd like have him toasted instantly yeah. and I think she'd even give Cal Drogo a hard time for being too fucking lenient on people because he seemed like quite a reasonable good king mm-hmm. but I she seems like a total bitch but I just I do not like her at all and there's quite a lot of times throughout the episode but it happens here certainly when she's speaking with other people and Tyrion keeps looking at her like mm, yeah. not sure if I dig this it's quite interesting this is where she was born yeah. This is her coming back. Daenerys is Stormborn. Yeah. Yeah. This is where she was born. Um, what I found came out of nowhere was when she started on at Varys. Yep. Yeah. I felt like that it's probably something that they've thought, people will be thinking this at home. Let's address it. That's exactly what I thought. I, I thought that someone's going to say, why is she okay with this dude when he allegedly... I can't, I can't actually remember, but... I'm pretty sure he gave the order for murdering her. His little bird His little team. Yeah, he but he was certainly network. spying on her. Yep. And he was definitely aligned with her father and Robert Baratheon. Mm-hmm. So what's to say he doesn't jump into bed with her, so to speak, and then jump out as quickly? Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. And the thing is, she's challenging him. After he's done loads of stuff to strengthen her army, he went over to... Which is smart, but... The sand place. Yeah, to an extent. Dick move. Mm -hmm. Because he could have been, if she didn't trust him, he could have been betraying her on a grander scale and saying to the sands or the Tyrells, Daenerys has gone mad, we need to take her down. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend we're with her, and then when she's not looking, knife in the back. Well, who's to say he's not? Well, this is true, but if she's... Stop be a swerve there someplace. Yeah, if she's challenging his loyalty, this wasn't... (laughs) The time it's a it, swerve, yeah. bro. <laughs> it's a swerve. However, he, wrestling he, he handled sorry. it quite well. He handled it expertly, and like, but that's his. That's, that's what he's thing. always been doing. Yeah. Well, like we said in the last episode, he has only once been beaten in a war of words, and that was by the new Red Woman, which is in season six. Yeah. It was only once he was like, "Oh fuck, you got me." <laughs> And yeah, because she knew something about him. Eh? Yeah, he she, was like... Mm, I can't remember what that was. No. And I was, was expecting to see her before now, but we've not seen her yet. So he handled it really well, and Daenerys is pushing him on, you betrayed all the previous kings, and you tried to murder me, did you not? So what's the deal with that? Mm-hmm. And... Sorry. No, oh, sorry, it was uh, just quickly, did any of you guys... Just when we were on the subject of Varys, did any of you guys watch... Peter Kay's car share when it was on. No. No. Uh, no, I can't really go much further then. <laughs> no, no. Fars has lost weight on a side note. Well, yeah, yeah. All that merman swimming across the... the I was going to say, that's going <laughs> to burn some calories, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard the merman theory? No. There's, no. A, there's a fan theory out there that Varys is a merman. That's why you never see his feet. That's why he's a eunuch, basically. And that's why he was able to get across the river to... What is it called? Marine? No. What's the name of the sand, with the sand place? House Tyrell? Well... Oh, right. It was where Lady Tyrell was, but... Um, Martells. Where the Martells come from? Spain. Yeah, well, basically, yeah. <laughs> um, House Martell... You also didn't listen to our Game of Thrones episode that we did ages ago. You must have skipped that one. Ah, oh, must have, yeah. Dorn. 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 Yeah, Dorn. Dorn. Darn it, I knew it. 
Dorn at you knew it. Well, the Red Viper of Dorn. I think it's pretty cool that Daenerys says to Varys, and this is not exact here, but something along the lines of, if I fail the people, please look me in the eye and tell me I'm failing yeah, them, yeah. as opposed to stabbing me in the back, like you do with everyone else. And he's like, oh yes, I would absolutely do that. And she's like, well, if you don't, I'll burn you alive. And he's like, doesn't miss a beat. I'd expect nothing less. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that he's so cool in the situation kind of makes you think that he's not fully down with her. That's what I get from it. I, I and I, I think Tyrion's looking looking back and forth like, I think I'm back the wrong horse. <laughs> I've done fucked up. <laughs> it's the dragons. That's the key thing. Um, everyone's going. How the fuck do you deal with dragons? However, they have a plan. Ah, uh, they do have a plan, but do, I, don't, I don't think we're there yet. We're either. not there yet, no, but I'm just teasing. So speaking of the Red Woman, Melisandre arrives, mm-hmm. and she pretty much says to Daenerys, you know what, you want to speak to Jon Snow. Yeah. Because d- despite what you've heard, he does know something. <laughs> you know nothing, John Doe. John Dobes. John Dobes, but did you see the, the bakery? Was oh it? yeah, I saw uh, that. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He it earlier. That's funny. So Daenerys is kind of basically still, I don't know, on her period, being a dick. I don't know what we want to go with here. Take your pick. Take your pick. But she's pretty much a heel. And Tyrion's like, yeah, do you know what? The Red Woman there, she's right. Jon Snow's pretty cool. I spoke to him a while back and you're like, instantly I'm like, oh yeah, season one, boom. That was they're talking like that's seven years ago, mm-hmm. and they're just dropping that in. Like that's what's cool about Game of Thrones is that there's stuff that happened in season one. They're they're dropping names of people, and oh, there's a guy that can change his face, and all this kind of shit. And it happens in like five seasons later, like that. That's that's the, that's the cool thing, and I like the fact that most shows go backwards, work mm-hmm. backwards, but they always work forwards, and they're also working backwards, which is really tasty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the next scene. That's a very short scene, and so is the next one with uh, John receiving a letter <clears throat> from Daenerys and discussing what he should do with Sansa. Yes. Yeah. Now, you just jump in if I'm going no, to... No, I mean, I think the, the, the concern here is he's now given Sansa power. And since the end of season six, everyone's been suspicious. Not in their world, but in our world as a viewer. Oh, yeah. Everyone is suspicious of Sansa right well, now. She was starting to show that I was going to say in yesterday's episode just because I watched it yesterday. Mm-hmm. But um, she doesn't fully agree with every battle plan that Jon Snow comes up with yeah. at the moment. But Jon Snow isn't exactly mm-hmm. the smartest tactician. He's very moral. Yeah. yeah. He, if it was down to him alone, he'd have lost the Battle of the Bastards. Absolutely. And Littlefinger knows this. Yes. And when Sansa's given the power. Did you see the smile on his face? Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, and it was taking that was the Pinker City. Yeah. Um. So he's discussing it with um, Sansa earlier on in the episode, and I can't remember this guy's name. And it really annoyed me. The Onion. The the Onion Knight. Onion Knight. Uh, yeah. Sir Davos. Sir Davos. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sir so Davos. He's that's, that's the guy from Dog Soldiers. Aye. Right? Uh, he's Liam pretty Pernan. much. He's pretty much John's second in command, and he's like, "Oh yeah, let's let's do that, John." <laughs> and so he, he does bring up a good point that Dragonfire will destroy the White Walkers. So maybe we team up with Daenerys. The thing is, Daenerys has already said to Melisandre mm-hmm. that um, you should send a letter to Jon Snow telling him to come here and bend the knee. So where John's going down there. To become to to arrange an alliance, she's yeah. thinking she's getting another subject, and I think that's where her arrogance and naivety come into it. Yeah, because she's thinking I'm just coming and commanding everything. Whereas if she has the if she is the rightful heir to the throne, then there's nothing he can do about that short of killing her. But if they form an alliance, they've got more chance than if he's to if she tries to make him subordinate. Yeah. So it's. I mean, I don't see why you'd really want to be in charge of the North. Like, if you've got the South, I mean, apart from just having more power, I totally, I absolutely get that. But when you think about it, the weather's shit up there. Jon Snow, if he's if he's a man of his word, and he is, 
if you kind of say like this is what we're going to do and you're just being charged of the north you'll kind of know that he's going to take care of that for you mm-hmm. and you know what that's it's that's a, that's a headache you don't need to have so as much as he'll quote unquote maybe bend the knee I think you give Jon Snow as Daenerys a lot of leeway mm-hmm. I think anything but that causes problems a lot of problems and unfortunately she's such a dick and so arrogant she isn't going to go with it. She's no. going to. She's going to. However, it. she can be talked around. We've seen before, especially from Tyrion, that she can be talked around. Yeah, wait till she goes heel on Tyrion. It's, it's that's going to be the. That's going to be the real heel turn when she goes heel on Tyrion. The thing is, at this stage, you're looking and you're going right. John's got a big army full of men. She's got variations. She's got. A, she's got real warriors though she's He's got, got men. She's got warriors. She's got boats. She's got dragons. You know, she's Lancy and air. In a, in a respect and so at this stage she's looking like the powerful one the really powerful one in the and she's got Tyrion who is an amazing tactician and managed to beat Stannis Baratheon's army mm-hmm. on the assault on King's Landing mm, King's Landing yep. what's the Red Keep is that even in this this the, universe the, the Red Keep the Red Keep yeah that's is that not what got blown up when um, at the end of season 6 no, that was. That was something else. Yeah, it was. <laughs> might have to Google that one. Red Keep might be, be might be in a fucking cartoon or something. <laughs> no, no, no. I think the Red Keep is definitely. Um, it's the residence of the King of the Andals and the First Men. Um, it's the family. It's located in King's Land, and it's the. I think it's the. Yeah, I, it's where they live. It's where the the family the first family actually live. Okay. That's probably why I remember it because I always wanted to live there. It's hilarious. See, like um, every time a new season of Game of Thrones starts off, I end up sitting and watching. Going, oh, I've been looking forward to this, right? And I sit there and watch it. Going, I've forgotten every major plot point from seasons. Yeah, because like, other past. shows go previously on AMC's The Walking Dead, you know, and stuff like that. And you get a recap of the relevant points for this episode. The re- like, you don't get that in Game of Thrones. Yeah, I but... I watched one on YouTube. Yeah, you can get other people's versions in that, but it depends if you've got the time to go and find it or not. For me, I just get home and switch it on and go, kind of thing. I think it's usually like very elusive as to what actually happened. They don't sometimes don't actually mention it. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh yeah, we've got to go find. I'm, I'm just I mean, shut up now. We've got to go find John Snow, and you're sitting there going, where the fuck is John Snow? Uh, yeah. That's what it was like for what me when I first it? watched it. <laughs> that spider's got all the way from there to there. And the time we've been doing the Game of Thrones that's podcast, by the way. tiny in comparison to the one that found in my garden earlier. My old man lifted a slab and there was a... This spider had knees. It was like, if you went to stand on it, it would throw you off and give you a stunner. You know? Nice. You throw a shoe at it, it throws it back. <laughs> that's one of the baby spiders. There's a, there's some big ones that, that live in this place. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I feel like... I mean... Obviously, we've all watched the episode. Everyone that's listening to this hopefully has as well. Um, if not, there was a spoiler that went up at the start. There a was a spoiler warning. No, so. Episode 2 review will give away their spoilers. Yeah, but Jon Snow obviously decides later on to go and meet with Daenerys. Yep. And I just kind of feel like it's all going to go a little bit tits right there. You think he's going to end up pumping the Red Witch finally? <laughs> and then finding out that she's actually old. <laughs> and her collar falls off halfway through it'd be like an episode from uh, Misfits oh yeah I remember oh. That that's like you suddenly sober up and you're like oh fuck talk about Ramsey Bolton was in that yeah yeah, yeah. he was as, that's why I think he's such a good actor because he does a lot of different stuff as Simon and Misfits and then he's again but he's he's suffering the problem now he's being typecast yeah he's Ramsey Bolton in space and in humans you know so yeah hey, apparently that trailer got laughed out of it's crap Comic Con. Yeah, it's just, it it's really bad. I've not watched it. One of the cast liked one of our tweets about them, though. Really? Yeah. And Mike Moe plays um Ah uh, Triton. Uh Tritus. I can't remember his character. Triton. Triton, yeah. He uh I tweeted saying, Can't wait to see this guy in action because he's Ryu in Street Fighter and Assassin's Fist. And he he replied and said, Thanks, David. There we go. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so the the show will go to flop, but it's got the buff geeks back. <laughs> it does, and we also got um, 
got a like from the Spider-Man Homecoming page the other day. We sure did. On Instagram. We actually got a like back in the days from uh, Angori Rice, who was actually in Spider-Man Homecoming as well. She was in the nice oh, guys. Oh yes, she was in the nice guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's actually she's in Spider Man Homecoming she's, as well. She's Betty, right? Uh, Betty Brant. Yes. Yes. Who's on the TV? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And looks so disin. It seems so disinterested. That's that. right, Josh. But I'm already going with that. That was straight of fucking naked gun right yeah. there. That was quality. <laughs> it's hilarious. That was absolute quality. Back to Game of Thrones. Back to Game of Thrones. <laughs> so next scene we're going <clears throat> all the way to King's Landing. Whoa, 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 whoa! Rewind. You've got Jon Snow and Littlefinger in the crypt, and Littlefinger basically. That's at the end. That's I'm, I'm, in, I'm going in an episode in the order of the episode. That's later on. No, that, that happens in the next scene. Nope. I watched it today. I took these notes less than twelve hours ago. Jon Snow. Whoever, whoever that is that you're looking at is wrong. No. Okay. Um. Okay. I'll tell you when it happens. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. There. All right. Okay. Fine. Trust me, every time I've seen so ended, I was the, taking notes. So this is done by location then, right, fine. Yeah, must be. Um, You're on Wikipedia by any chance? Uh, but he's on a site we're not mentioning. The link I sent you. Oh, aye, right, okay. It's keeping cool. me right with the, the stuff. But not on the order. So we go over to Cersei. We Who go over to King's Landing. Is in King's Landing, yeah. Yes, so go to the King's Landing section. And um, go <laughs> straight to King's Landing. And Cersei suggests that the bannerman of House Tyrell should side with her because I, I can't remember the, the Queen's name of House Tyrell this doesn't talk about King's Landing at all well let's see if when I talk about it it jogs your memory oh no I remember it okay. but this doesn't talk about it is it not Imara or something like that Imara the uh, I could be totally wrong um, Marjorie's mother let's just call her that for right now so mm. basically Cersei's trying to sell to House Tyrell's bannerman that Marjorie's mother has kind of lost the plot and that they should side with Th- with Cersei and that although they've sworn an oath to House Tyrell they also have sworn an oath to the crown mm-hmm. so they want to maybe reconsider their position yeah. and decide you know maybe they want to stick with the crown on this one which kind of makes a, a lot of sense mm-hmm. Um then this Jamie is, this is Sam's this is the one with Sam's dad isn't it yeah. it is yeah Aye. so then Jamie goes and speaks with Sam's Sam's dad Randall Tarley, Tarley and asks him if he would like to be the general of the, of their armies yeah based on the fact that he is the only man to beat Robert Baratheon in battle and I was like fucking hell that's totally cool like he must be a bad ass because Robert Baratheon was more wine boy <laughs> You know, he thing. was so funny and awesome. But the thing is, you never see Robert as a, a was, skilled was that fighter. Mark, Mark Addy? Yeah. yeah. You never yeah. see him as like a skilled fighter, or you never see him as a tactician. In fact, you see him as a bit oafish. Give me whores and wine. Yeah, you see yeah. him, it was almost like he had been, and he was kind of like, you know, when the footballer can no longer play football, and they kind of just Live off degenerate their, into, yeah. yeah. He was almost like that, and he got killed by a boar. Yeah. Yeah, and it was just uh, was it all blood poisoning or something? Like yeah, and it's like yeah. they it almost felt like Robert Baratheon was a joke. Yet they talk about him with such like reverence. Rever- Is that, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like we only ever really saw like one side of him. Yeah, but behind closed doors, he was probably such a fucking ass kicker. Yeah, he was. He was. Well, he was a big man, and he he won a war and it just so happened because he won this war he became king it's not like he was really meant to be the type he didn't want to rule he wanted Ned to rule yeah so and Ned would have been a good ruler so I don't know it's um I I, I think it'd be really cool to see like a flashback scene of Robert Baratheon like fucking laying into someone maybe even taking on was it Rhaegar uh, Targaryen that he beat on the beach the battle in the I believe so Yep. I just had Winston Churchill going through my head there as soon as you said that battle on the beach. Uh, we will yeah. fight them and then we will fight them in the air. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so Randall Tarley doesn't really give much away, and you're at, at the end of the scene with him and Jamie, you're not really sure which way Randall's going to go. But I think that he's probably going to side with Jamie. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Also, because he's 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 a heel. Who, who was yeah. it that Jamie just totally dismissed? Was it? It was his son. It was the son, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't Rion. It was like he totally big timed them. 
yeah. I, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was like, it was like, oh, oh you're Rickon, and he's like, no, I'm Rion. And he's like, yep, yeah, that's it anyway. So anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. Good story, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and just moved it along, which is kind of foolish, considering that you're trying to ask his pops if he wants to be the main man yeah like, but you don't want to disrespect the pops by spending too much time talking to someone else keep talking. no but you, you at least say you at least acknowledge the fact that like acknowledge the kid's name and stuff like that you know mm. so I don't know I thought it was kind of weird yeah good 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 shout um, anything you want to say about that scene I mean it was a very short scene I it think was that was the only only thing of Cersei in it that was something that was setting up for like another setting up for something to happen in the future I, I like sort of like setting the scene for something later it almost seemed irrelevant at the time but it's going to have big repercussions later on and I think it was showing that tar- the Tarly's allegiance isn't as straightforward as it might be no and it also gives you more of a reference point for Cersei when people are saying, "Oh, she's going to sell it this way to get these people to back her," mm-hmm. because later on they even bring that up, like like uh, Tyrion says, "She's going to do this," and it's exactly, it's exactly what she's done. Aye. So it makes Tyrion look smart, but also makes her like the way she's smart. selling it is quite good as well. She's saying, "This the Mad King's daughter," and that's what he always called her. And they're like, they're like the Mad King, the Mad King, the Mad King, the 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 Cal Drogo's army, uh, the Dothraki. Are just animals. They're savages from another land. They're from somewhere different from here. Mm-hmm. They be foreigners. We don't like foreigners. Yeah. The unsullied, freaky, weird eunuch creeps. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dragon. Like she's got magical beings behind her and these monsters. Remember what the dragons did before? Like she sold it really well. So although it's a very short scene, it actually, you know, really does work for getting across what she was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um. Then, as I was thinking, Tarly, 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 who do I... Is that, is that Sam's dad? Is it? I'm not quite sure. And then, boom, Sam comes up on the on the screen, and I'm like, oh, it's Cuts Sam! To Sam! There was a lot of linking like that in this episode as Same well. with the other one. It was like the... Do you know when Sam's cleaning up stuff? Yes. There was a lot of... That, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the most disgusting scenes I've ever seen. Uh, Horrible. Eh? It's, it's just the fact that soon last week when the slop starts to the look poo like... poo pots. The, ah, yeah. And you're just like, oh my god. You start to lose track of what's what. Well, yeah. it's bedpans, I suppose you call it. Um, yeah. And then straight away, you're into Jorah. Yes. Just sitting there. Jorah more and more. I thought they were going to kind of tease that one out a little bit. No, you, know? you, see, um, you see the full extent of the damage. The grayscale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely horrible uh, I don't know the name of the Meister there it's uh, Jim Broadbent's character I've had his name here just literally two seconds ago it is bear with us folks yep anyway so yeah while he's looking so for the that. Meister the Ebros. Meister's like hmm? Archmeister Ebros March, Archmeister Ebros is kind of like yeah you got the grayscale what's that Sam yeah, those people, they were they were they had it early. You've got yeah. it too late. Oh well. I think what you should do is just stay here one more night before we ship you off to live with the rock people. Yeah. He's basically saying we'll give you one more night so you can kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and cause... there's your sword. Ooh, so that's that. uh, interesting. Um let's go, Sam. <laughs> and I'm like, fucking hell. He doesn't even want to try whatever Sam's got in mind. He's no interest, he wants to write his book. Ex- yeah, mm-hmm. but it's pretty cool how he's like, so Sam, did you read the, the full ecronom about mint imperials? And he's like, no. Well, how about the codex? Um, also no. Well then, shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I was saying to David last week, I sent him a wee text saying, uh, I have never been so happier in Game of Thrones than when uh, Jim Broadbent <laughs> popped up. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, that's fucking genius. If you uh, if there's a show that he deserves to be in, it's definitely Game of Thrones. Well, he, when he pops up in it, I'm like... I've never been... I, I feel like he's already been in this I the like, whole time, you yeah, know? Yeah, it, it's like... I don't know, I've never been as happy as I was when uh, the last season when Ian e. McShane popped up for the e. one... Ian McShane popped me. Oh, man, it was just brilliant. I was just like, yes. <laughs> Cal, you didn't pop me, though, just on a side note. Ed Sheeran. Mm. But, nope. I, I did find that... Um, 
when uh, he mentioned the book he was writing. Yeah. And he said, like, the I can't remember the, the war and blah, blah, blah. A chronicle of the times after the death of Robert Baratheon or something like that. And Sam's like, you should give it a name that's a bit more poetic. How about Game of Thrones? <laughs> He's writing the story as it's happening. He's writing Game of Thrones. And Sam is going to finish Game of Thrones before George R. R. Martin. Sam's going to take over writing that book and finish writing the story so of Game of Thrones. It's like they put a bit of meta in there, right? Yeah, before the, book is, uh, the books are actually finished. Because we're ahead of the books now. Yeah. I've just uh, blown your yeah, mind. Huh? Had your mind blown. Uh, but I know um, some of the other guys who was like the one of the soldiers love the Sheeran. It was uh, Thomas Turgus. He uh, he crops up in a lot of Shade Meadows stuff. Like uh, this is England, and you say that like I should know who Shade Meadows is. Oh, damn it! Right. Okay. <laughs> well, you've heard of this is England, and no. Okay. I've heard the name this thing like I presume it's a football yeah, film. Dead Man's Shoes. Nope. No, I've not seen that. Okay. Anyway, moving Are these on. British films? They are indeed. Ah, I wouldn't see any of those. I only watch American Big Blockbusters. Same, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, now I've mugged off Ian suitably and that's, had that's my mind blown by David. That's why your calls. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I don't know. Just said. <laughs> that's probably right. Um, <laughs> then we move quite quickly over to oh no Cersei is in another scene I was wrong oh, so for everyone that was no. saying three minutes ago you are wrong I am wrong um, her meister which I don't know his name but the creepy kind of voodoo fucker yeah it's not Euron is it? no that's Euron Greyjoy yeah, yeah ignore me yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll show up pretty soon he'll. <laughs> Cersei's meister earlier on said yeah we got a plan for the dragons and I'm like Quyburn. Quygon. Quyburn. <laughs> Quyburn. Okay. You're thinking Star Wars. Yeah. Quyburn takes them downstairs to. I'm not sure. The catacombs of the castle, yeah. I presume. Where the, uh, uh, the. The bones of the previous dragons are kept. Yes. As trophies, basically. Where Robert would sometimes take his whores. Mm, whores. Mm. And. Um, you see the the, the the bone structure, which I, I think was practical, right? I feel like it was a practical effect. I would think so. Which would be pretty sweet to see, right? Yeah. If you just went down there and just the whole thing. And he, he used to like talk about how we got this covered, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, he's going to bring the bones to life. <laughs> and they'll have dragons that are... No, no, he just made a big crossbow. Yep. A big ballista. Which I... Well, it's cool and makes sense but I was kind of thinking I don't know I just suddenly thought I don't know if you guys thought it as well he's going to bring the, the dragons back to life like he did with the mountain mm -hmm. no did anyone get that was anyone feeling that I, I thought it was going to be the is it dragon binder what's that the horn that can control the dragons ooh what's that it's, it's been in the books but I just it's something from the <laughs> books the thing is, it's mentioned before Robert. now in the books. It's not been mentioned, even hinted at at all in the TV series. So to bring something big like that in, I don't think they'd do it. The thing is, if they use a crossbow, they're going to take out one of the small dragons. Yeah. So that leaves two. One for Daenerys, one for Jon. I think the Night's King might warg into one of them. So that, that levels the playing field. If one dragon's out already, it's only two and the Night King gets one. Suddenly the dragons are... Split. One for South, one for North, one for White Walkers. Uh, well, one dead. One for yeah. humanity and one for the walkers. So instantly the, the dragon's effectiveness has been diminished. Interesting. Sorry. That's so, a total tangent. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think um, the dragons will do their damage, then probably you'll lose one. Yeah. Which might make Daenerys do just go fucking nuts. Because she sees them as her children. And I kind of feel like... And I also... I'm sure I read somewhere that Cal Drogo makes an appearance in either this season or the next one. Well, he made an appearance in three or four, did he not? When Daenerys was, like, tripping out or something. I feel like it was literally season two. Was it two? Was yeah, it as far so. back as that? I feel, I feel like it was that, yeah. I feel like it was that. Um, I was kind of disappointed in the fact that he just had a fucking arrow. I was looking for some um, black magic shit. Hmm. You know, so I kind of felt like it was a bit of an anticlimax for me, but 
And I'm not quite sure why he would be the one that would be in charge of working with the best blacksmiths to combat the dragons. I feel like he would come up with some other earthworldly... You know what I mean? That was the Thursday night people being paid, so it means automatically, oh. I'm drunk! Blah, 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 blah! Shout, 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 shout in the street. <laughs> Idiots. Yeah. We could just pretend it's a crowd trying to get in. You know, like when you see the news in America and you see the windows and you see all the people standing in the background like waving and... Yeah, yeah. We just pretend there's like people climbed up half a towers. I do it all the time. Yeah. Sorry, climb up half a towers <laughs> or pretend there's people... And try to get in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking lose my key always. So... I felt like that, that scene made a lot of sense, but I didn't think he was the right the right person for introducing that weaponry. Surely it should have been, I don't know, the weapons master or... Jamie. The, Jamie should have been working on it. Mm-hmm. You know, that would have made way more sense. Yeah. Because I instantly thought, cool, magic, demons, monsters, what's it going to be? Arrows. Bigger arrows. Hmm. But then I think that also represents their way of thinking. And that he made a, he, he made a zombie but like you can't go make it a zombie and then be like I made a big arrow like I'm still waiting for this zombie to fucking do something I'm well kind it of ripped hope... a guy's spine out oh true I don't know I it think fucking went full predator on him <laughs> kind no, of hoping true. that uh, it's going to be like click in bowl a, a Wrestlemania moment where they're slowly going to build up until the final payoff imagine if Arya was the one to kill the mountain I feel like it's possible. Like the smallest character. Ghost functions. <laughs> I, the smallest character in the entire thing took out the biggest character in the entire thing. That would be pretty cool. Probably Brianna takes some, takes some out or something like that. I want it to be the Hound. Yeah, no. I totally. want it to be the Hound. So so bad. So bad. So yes, I'm just trying to find. Uh, we had some some commentary. I'm just going to bring it up. Ah. On the last episode. Sweet. Oh, Kizzy Jin. Yes, but we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll pull that out in a second. Uh, do you know who that so is? So to speak. Probably. Yeah? It's Kev. That's what I thought. Uh. Um, so, um, we've just left the Red Keep. Yep. Or the underground of the Red Keep. And Daenerys is having a meeting with her team, and I didn't know the names of everyone. So you'll have to provide the names of the team. But yeah. they're all in the war room try to decide well no not try to decide Listening. basically Tyrion saying this is what we're going to do and it's kind of like what do I even need you for Daenerys yes like she's got the following but Daenerys is fucking useless and you know what I, my enjoyment of Game of Thrones went down at the same rate that Tyrion's involvement in the show went down yes I liked it much better when he was around and he's just getting little last season he was just doing the drunk comedy gig basically on occasion uh, the last season he was almost a filler at times especially the scenes with Miss Sandy and Grey Worm fucking awful they were, they were like deliberately awkward but it was still awkward it wasn't sitting there going oh this is brilliant because it's so funny how awkward they are and stuff it was like right, yeah um, can we get past this this he seems to be doing a little bit more but he's still not dropping the knowledge bombs he's still not getting the banter mm. you know I for me, Game of Thrones was Tyrion was the main character, and then he suddenly wasn't, and that's I, that is totally when my interest in the show waned, which would be whenever he left. Is that, is that when the the proper writers room took over? But or, well, the proper writers room took over for from season six onwards, I believe. Yeah, just from like last season. But that got it. yeah that that killed it for me. So, but even before that, kind of season season five, he wasn't in it that much. He was kind of traveling away. To safety mm-hmm. and to Daenerys, and I was kind of like, oh, I need more Tyrion. But I need more Tyrion. In my I, don't, life. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't like Daenerys, Daenerys. But she's she's chatting with everyone. And she's basically like, oh sorry, Tyrion's basically like, okay, this is what's happening. Why don't you use your armies to block anyone getting in and out of Westeros so they can't get any food and water for the soldiers, etc., etc. Sound strategy. And instantly, the rest of the group are like, oh, so you're just going to use our men. Mm-hmm. what's the crack with that is it, well I'll tell you what it is Cersei's going to say that we're going to use outsiders and this will mean that the other houses won't suddenly feel really scared of the whole situation and feel like everyone's going to get taken over by the Unsullied and the uh, not the Cals the uh, Dothraki Dothraki yep 
and it's like, all right, okay, that's a sound theory, Tyrion. We're gonna go with that. Yeah, he convinced so what, them yeah, easily. Ah, yeah. oh, so easily. Whereas Daenerys would be like, "Well, this is the way I want it, so fuck you." And they'd be like, all "Right, okay." Um, she wouldn't have. She she would have had to be overbearing and aggressive and kind of scare them. Mm-hmm. Like she seems so much like Cersei from season one, mm-hmm. right now. And that's who she wants to destroy, which is interesting. She become the person you hate the most, and then Tyrion's like, "We're going to take our army, the Unsullied, and keep them out of sight, and we're going to attack um, the uh, Ca- Casterly Rock. Castor- Casterly Rock, yeah, which is the real power of the whole, the whole of country. the Lannister. Well, it's the Lannisters' home, basically. Who are the real power of the whole country, yeah. really? So, I was like fuck that's a really good idea both I- those ideas are really good because when he said they wanted to use their army like I'm going to use your army to do this I was like you're using my fucking army to do shit mm-hmm. where's your army yeah oh so it was a good because like Yara, wanted, Yara Greyjoy she just wanted to attack just let's just get in and attack let's them. just do it yeah <laughs> and he was like no no because there's no point in slaughtering you know tens of thousands of people as a non-starter Although it means you've got less people to feed. This is true, but you've also just if you get to power through an absolute bloodbath, how long are you gonna be in there? You need to be smart about it and look after the people. Because they're the ones who are gonna support you when you're in there. Well, this is why I'd definitely be king, but maybe not king for very long. <laughs> Whereas you might not get to be king because you spend too long planning it. I'd be a, an awesome king if I made it. But if you yeah, exactly. And then you've More got, wine! You know the, the bit. <laughs> I thought it was quite brutal when Ilaria Al- 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 Sand, however you say it. The Spanish chick. Yeah, the woman yeah. basically says that my greatest regret is that Oberyn died fighting for you, and you just like. And you just suddenly remember the head popping and Oberyn. Oh, yep. That's so but then he's like, but uh, you killed my fucking little cousin. Yeah. Niece, Appar- sorry. Apparently, another wee spoiler that's coming up pretty soon. There's going to be somebody else who's going to suffer a fate. Worse than uh, Oberon. Oberon. Really? Apparently, this season's got like the most disgusting death ever. Oh well then. So, I mean, if uh, if Oberon's death put you off your food, then apparently it's nothing compared to what's about to happen. But this could be all rumor and innuendo. Uh-huh. But uh, it's just something that hit hit the uh, hit the the trades today, shall we say? There's a <laughs> there was a script leak before the start. And one of the there was two bits. One of them's already happened, and the other one, this is according to my mate Paul. If it happens, and he won't tell me, and I don't want to know what it is. He says, if it happens, it's going to be the biggest moment in Game of Thrones history, like Game of Thrones so far. So, I don't know. After I don't know if they can ever top the Red Wedding. For me, the Red Wedding was big at the time, but then it was like. That was on a season three scale, and then you had a season four scale, which was bigger. But what happened to season four? Joffrey's death at the start of season. <laughs> and then you had the. That was a really constructive argument. <laughs> I had to That's think of counter arguments like... to that one. Compared to the Red Wedding, I agree fuck. with you. <laughs> but so Joffrey gets gets no, fucking poisoned, but... weighed against someone stabbing a pregnant woman and it, slitting her fucking throat. It comes that back was amazing. to it comes back to what Ian was saying though. When you watch the new season, you've kind of forgotten what happens in the old season, and the impact of it is lost as well. End of season six, we're like, holy shit, they've killed off Tommen. Right, fair enough, yeah. He, who the fuck is Tommen? He wasn't a massive character, but he was king, and he was the blockage between Cersei getting the throne. Jobber. Yeah, but he was he was a he was a roadblock basically. Yeah, yeah he so was, he, but he's 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 still right? a nobody. Yeah, but so you're you're suddenly didn't going. Mean that much. You're suddenly going. He jumped out the window, didn't he? Yeah, he had a king's landing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was stopping. You had Marjorie and the house battle. That was that was Loras. big, but but. but the, there was probably bigger characters killed there, but mm. in the Red Wedding, that was the most gratuitous display of violence and disgusting but, like, wretchedness of, a, of, a, of, a, of how a human being could do that. Yeah, I know. But this is what I'm saying, is the gap between seasons desensitises you a bit to what you've seen, because it's lost its edge. Nothing will top that, I don't I, think. I, like, I don't know, I just think you start to... What stands out more than that? What was me, worse than that? Hard Home was... 
more exciting. Hard home? When they went and actually fought the army of walkers with the, the wildlings, the free folk that were See, that was, that, that was cool that as, as well. shit. That was cool as shit. Yeah. But it wasn't like, what the fuck? Yes, it was. Uh, when the people when started coming... When cut their neck. When the people started coming back to life. Nah. And, like, the kiddies were fighting and stuff like but that. But you knew that was going... You uh, knew that's how it would go down yeah, and it would happen. No one, no one expected the Red Wedding to go down the way it did. Not one person mm. expected it. Not one. They, the red wedding is first, and then Ned Stark's death is second. In terms of what the fuck, Ned Stark set the tone for the what the fucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, I think we'll have to argue the toss of that at some point. Yeah, because we road. need to get to the big climax of this episode. Oh, oh yes, we do need to get to the climax. Where are we at actually? So Daenerys meets with her team, and then um, she has a quick chat with uh, Elena Tyrell afterwards as well. Yeah, I missed that bit, so I, it, it skipped on the, the part where they're speaking. Oh, right, okay. So I don't actually know what they said. Yeah, I can actually remember. Oh, no, 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 that's a lie. I remember I rewound it and went back. Um, so when they were speaking, basically, Elena was telling Daenerys, you know what? Why are you listening to him? Why are you listening to a sheep? You're a dragon. Mm. Be a dragon. They won't obey you unless they fear you. And I'm like, this doesn't seem like sound advice. I mean, I get that you're like, oh, everyone loved Marjorie, the noble people, and the the the, the, the scumbags. What do you call them? Peasants. Um, <laughs> I say from my tower, public. <laughs> the, the gen pop. Um, yeah, everyone loved her, and then look what that got her. And mm. it's like, okay, but that doesn't doesn't mean that your advice is good in this situation. Like Marjorie played it really, really well. Mm-hmm. It's just she could have done with a little bit more physical backup. Or a, a fire exit. Yeah, that as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, Daenerys, I think, is getting bad advice from Olea. Uh, Olena. Olena. I think that's bad advice. You're a dragon. Be a dragon. And I feel like Olena's trying to get um, Daenerys, Daenerys to attack mm-hmm. and get herself killed. <laughs> or at least attack, win the kingdom, and a people hate her and then she'll finish the job. I don't think she's trying to help Daenerys one bit. She's always had her own agenda. Yeah, she has. She never hid the fact that she hated Cersei and she hated everything about the Lannisters. And I want to kill her. Yeah, did she say that? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Aye. Yeah. So, after that conversation... Fuck! It kicks off. Nope. Does it not? Nope. None of these things are accurate. No nope. grey worm. And that that's why that's why I'm gonna keep on keeping my notes. Yeah, you're gonna have to I'm gonna have to So I'm gonna keep on having a fucking I'm gonna have to watch Game of Thrones for an hour and forty minutes <laughs> every week. It's still shorter than some MCU films you've been that's watching. That's true, but I was getting really I told you I was getting super anxious because I couldn't relax. I kept on pausing yeah. to Anyway, so Grey Wolf and Mel Sandy Miss Miss Sandy? Miss Sandy. Miss Sandy basically do the you know what? We've been playing playing at this whole thing for a little bit we've been pussyfooting around the issue now we get pussy eating in the issue let's get some fuck on yeah let's get our fuck on here's my boobies I'm probably gonna Oops. die you're probably gonna die as in Miss Sandy pointing to him because I think Miss Sandy will make it potentially I think there's, that she's got a good a reasonable chance to sneak under the radar plus she's quite useful with her ability to translate yep she's like C-3PO yeah. of Game of Thrones except from She's got a much better dashboard. Uh, chassis. Chassis. <laughs> Headlights. Headlights. Headlamps. Yeah, so I was kind of hoping to see Grey Wolf's non dick. Worm. Yeah. Grey Worm. What? Grey Who's Worm. Grey Who's Grey Wolf? Wolf? I have no idea. From Harry Potter. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so a Grey Worm. Grey I've been calling I've I been think Grey, Grey Wolf, Wolf is actually notes. one of the Death Eaters from Harry Potter. Fuck. Okay, so Grey Worm. I was hoping to see his fucking. Astro Worm. I want to see his, his shiny Ken pouch his Ken doll pouch <laughs> and I really thought they were going how to go for it how does he pee well I want to know yeah how does he pee has he got more of like a kind of a mangina thing going on what is it I don't know how would it look can we get a picture no go on. I'm not googling that do it no do it do it now do it now ow 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 <laughs> no right fine what am I going to what am I going to google <laughs> I'm the only one with the fucking accurate notes you don't have any notes <laughs> So 
I think you need to be able to Google it. Also, you've got the big screen so we can show it off and all go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally like that. Like you've fallen off a small wall. Uh, yeah. Grey on a side... Non- okay, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to say it. Uh, I was going to sidebar something to Ian there, but I don't think I should on on, a, on air. <laughs> Grey, grey worm. Thankfully, there are no images. No, but no. <sighs> Did you put grey worm non wiener? Yeah. No, this is. <laughs> fuck me. Put. Put. Genital. Eunuch. No, there's not an actual picture of him. Put eunuch. Yeah, eunuch. I, I don't want to see this. Right, okay. right, there's one. There's one, right? A wee Chinese boy. Well, let's scan in it. I want to see. Scan. Right, there you go. He's got a wee hole. Right? Huh. So they're probably just like scissor sister each other or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I want, I'm trying to figure out how he pees. Oh, and yeah, how much yeah. is left over. Like, hmm. if you leave an inch, is that he's, still... He's like, uh, he's like Jack Bauer. I don't think he ever pees. Yeah, Jack Bauer goes 24 hours without peeing or taking a shit or eating or drinking. And that's why I won't watch the show because it's not real lifelike. It's still worth watching. Like, if yeah. you like twists and turns, it's the one to watch. Maybe, anyway, I don't know. Maybe in 10 years' time. We keep on rolling. We keep on rolling. So they the, hate it. They get down. Or he gets, he gets down. down. Anyway. Yep. And, and it's funny, my boss said to me, how, how would that work out? And I says, well, I think he doesn't really have anything, so it's all about her, which is why they went down the route they went down. And he just laughed, and I was like, yeah, that was quite clever. <laughs> yeah, he went down. <laughs> he did, but also his Accidental, but... his G spot is in his fucking asshole, so she could always slip one in there. That'd be yeah. But then, can if he can if he can piss, he can obviously shoot his load. Then can he? Right? Has he got a load to shoot? I don't know. I need. To, I if you d- if you didn't carry the water tank, you can't shoot your pistol. That's a bit, yeah, good point. So huh? I'm going to need to look into Unix. <laughs> You have to ask them permission or buy them a drink you know, first. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm doing tonight? If I, if a eunuch. Any, if there's any eunuchs that listen to the show, I'd really like to know how this all works. We want to meet you. Yes. Sort of. <laughs> no, I, no, I want to understand how it works. Okay, okay. Fuck's sake, man. Anyway, right. So after we've got um, the, the pussy eating out of the way, we're back to Sam. Who's a... Uh... About to perform major surgery. So, this is this is where um, th- uh, my TV wasn't working correctly. So, Jonah Marmont. <clears throat> Sam goes and speaks to him and says, I knew your father. And it's Sam kind of way that I felt trying to do. I could hear it, I just couldn't replicate it. Okay. Yeah. So, m- yeah, my TV didn't work at this bit for some reason. Your sky is only part recorded. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, what, that's it, yeah. Right, so, because uh, I had too much stuff on the... Uh, Saved on the anyway. So what happened exactly in this scene? Because I didn't get it Based, all. The, it's sort of the long and short of it is he says, "I think I can cure you, but it's going to fucking hurt." Yeah. Is that all he said to him? He, no. Well, the thing yeah. is, he happens to mention it to Ebros, and Ebros tells him it's forbidden. You, you can't, you can't do it because yeah, there's a risk of infection on yourself. Yes. And uh, but then he decides to go ahead and do it anyway because obviously he's got a sentimental attachment to Mormon's father. Why? Was. He, did it not turn out that, um, Sir Jorah is well Sam was there when Sir Mormon of the Night's Watch got killed got killed yeah. oh this is something I didn't pick up on this is do you remember Sir Mormon from uh, season 2 or 3 and they go north of the wall and then there's a rebellion and he gets killed in is it somebody's home somebody's stay uh, Sir Mormon of the Night's Watch. You recognise the actor, I can't remember his name and it's really bugging me. Uh, J- is it not? Uh, James Cosmo. Cosmo, that's it, oh. James Cosmo. Oh, him? J.R. Mormon. He's, he's oh, Sir, right. He's Sir Jonah's dad. Oh, that totally does work because he's, yeah, he does look like him and he's kind of got that kind of rugged, manly, old, like handsomeness about him, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I didn't realise that was his dad. They're, so, both, they're both Scottish as well. So. so why did he get sent up there, actually? What, north of the wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he, led he, he led a team on uh, to find John, was it? I can't remember. Oh. No, but why? No. 
No, he was already the the king of the Night's Watch or whatever you call it. Um, Lord Commander. Lord Commander. So why was Lord. he up at the Night's Watch? I don't know actually. Because mm, he seems like see it's stuff like this you kind of forget when a new season of Game of Thrones <laughs> rolls around. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't know that, but that's why he's got such an affinity towards him. Yes. Right. I didn't. I, did, I couldn't figure it out. Part of the Night's Watch as well. So. Yep. Yeah. So he was performing that surgery. That looks so fucking painful. That looked horrible. Well, was he going to just fucking peel his skin off and hope, and that's it? And then rub this ointment on. Was, oh my god! Is that not just sorry? Just going back to his death. Is that not where Sam went to hide and met up with a uh, Gilly? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. when they were staying with the guy who was impregnating all his daughters. What yeah. I was saying was, Jr. was once the Lord of Bear Island and head of House Mormon until he abdicated his seat in favour of his son, Sir Jorah, and joined the Night Watch. Hmm. So, and then his son okay. Jorah disgraced himself by selling slaves and fled to the Free Cities. So that's it. And that's, Liana is his, like, niece or something. Let me just move this real is quick, it, guys. Is it Lasana? What's that? Is it not? Is Lia- it? Liana, yeah, Liana little Mormon. girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I always thought her name was Lissana. No, I kept Liana getting Mormon. mixed up. Hmm, interesting. She's fucking badass. The little she bear, yeah. <laughs> I can't think who that is. The little girl, uh, the, the wee girl in the uh, the Night's Watch. The one that's given all the orders in the Night's Watch. Oh, she's she's, she's amongst she's, them just now. She's the she's the Lord of Bear Island at the moment. All oh, right, her. Who's yeah. she? She will be his. Yeah. Granddaughter. Granddaughter, I assume. Oh, okay. I did not. I didn't pick that one up either. Cool. Nice. So, I thought that scene was fucking brutal. Oh, it was like, yeah. yeah. It was really horrible. Yeah. And then they're cutting into. He's cutting into Sir Jorah, and then you flip over to Arya eating a pie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh no, that was another <laughs> one of those scenes like the slop and the and the. Well, it's the same when the poop shoot. Grey Worm goes down on Miss Andy and she reaches her arm out and then you see Sam grabbing a book. Mm. It's just, again, it's another one of these kind of links. And you know? that's, I like this. A bit. They've, they've got a clever editor in this season, I tell mm. you. They definitely do. <laughs> and they, they don't, I think there was just one fart joke last season, like last see, I episode. I totally missed it. I totally missed that fart joke. But it wasn't that bad because it's when the guy's sleeping and he's cleaning up the, oh, yeah. the bed pants. So it's oh, not right, that yeah. bad. Um, no, but you were saying about like last season, season six, when they're about going to battle, and one yeah. guy lets rip. I, I, I totally missed that. There's, there's two, two, two or three fart jokes. It's in the it. one it with bad. the maester that kills Yeah, me. that was awful. The grand maester. That's the funniest. That was terrible. See, I, I, I must have missed that. <laughs> anyway, so, um, we find out, and I never even thought about this, which is kind of surprising, but Arya's like doesn't know that Jon Snow is. Back. King, of, king of the North. He's King of the North. Uh, they forgot to text her. That's what it was. So never checked her Facebook. As soon as she gets told this, I'm like, "Oh yeah, she wouldn't know this." Uh, oh right, fuck. She's got a new mission then. Yeah. She'll be going up to the north mm-hmm. and finally see Sansa. And then I thought to myself, "Well, goddamn, she's gonna kill Sansa or Baelish." <sighs> Ooh. Think, think Baelish will get rapey rapey on Sansa to complete the trifecta. What was Baelish's part in the Red Wedding? Did he have a part in the Red Wedding? Mm. I don't know if he would because he was in love with Catelyn Stark. I don't uh, think he was particularly happy about her getting her throat cut. Mm. And he had, I think he had a big hand on Ned. Mm-hmm. In fact, he, he, he put the knife to his throat, if I believe. Possibly. And then Ned was captured by the rest of the the, 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 the armor the Golden Guard or something. I think it would be quite interesting actually if you got this little finger story starting to develop and it's going someplace and then out of nowhere Sansa just kills him like it's nothing and mo- uh, Arya just kills him like it's nothing and moves on. Eh? Mm. Uh, I feel like he's, he's going to get ended. Although I wouldn't mind if him and Varys got to have one last kind of battle of wits, so to speak. That would be not quite say cool. last week they could end up being the ones on the throne. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they they easily could be. So Arya's heading north. Arya's heading north, and John is telling Sansa that he's going to be ta- that she's going to be taking himself down to see Daenerys, and he tells all the other lords 
of the North that he's going to do so, and they're kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. We need the King of the North and the North. And um, Sans is like, just obviously disagreeing with John again because she's obviously got to, like, as much as John isn't very good at, he's not much of a tactician, Sansa could sidebar him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not be a, such a fucking obvious cunt. Mm-hmm. But John's like, well, you know what? I didn't even want to be king anyway, so Sansa's in charge until I come back. And you're like, oh, fuck. And like you said earlier, Littlefinger is... He is loving Smart that. so big, it's knocking people off their seats. He's like... He's one riding away from being King of the North. Yep. Like, that's not too shabby a deal. And before John goes, he, he, he pays a little bit of tribute to his father mm-hmm. uh, underneath in the, I don't know what you'd call it, the family the crematorium? Crypt, crypt. Crypt, crypt. Crypt, crypt. There we go, that's the word. The, the sculptor crypt. got Ned's face pretty Fucking good. Fucking really like good. That. Yeah. Really that good. Impressive. Um, I was expecting it to look at the camera and wink. Yeah. <laughs> And then he kind of hints to John that maybe I kind of like Sansa a little bit. And John fucking loses his shit. I want to diddle your little uh, sister. Did he not say he pretty he loves her? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I we... love her the same way I love Catelyn. Or someone like that. Which is really which is really creepy, you know? Like, I loved her, your mom, and I also want to fuck you. I'm not saying that I've not wanted like a mother and a daughter before. And I'm not saying that I've not done that. But I am saying it's kind of weird. Hmm. <laughs> You know, so John really took offence to that, right? Because mm-hmm, like, he, he hates Littlefinger. Just kill him. Yeah, I I don't know why he didn't. To be honest, because aside from the army, which I'm sure their loyalties could be swayed pretty quickly, Baelish has nothing. He's not a lord of. Has he got his own like house? Or... Probably he's got a house. I know he's Lord Baelish, but I don't think he's a lord in the same sense of like. I think he's Lord well, of the Lannister, Whores, right? So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's strange. So, Remember how many whores used to get in the show and how much boobs? Like, yeah. on a constant. Yeah, that, that was just a wee hook to get you involved. In it. it was, wasn't it? And I always told some people who disliked the show because of that, because they thought that the women were not were treated well, I was like, just wait. Just wait for the payoff, motherfucker. They're going to get wait? revenge. Did they wait? No, they didn't. And, and now, now the women are running the show. The women are all... It's all about the women, isn't it? Apart from one man... Apart from one man who's slowly become one of my fucking favourites. So, just before we get to that bit, oh. which you've tried to get it to this scene the whole time. Yeah, it's getting late. <laughs> that's true. Um, there was another part where my TV wasn't working correctly. And um, Arya is set upon by a pack of wolves and a dire wolf. Mm-hmm. Now, my understanding was that it wasn't her dire wolf. No, it was. It was Nymeria. No it was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I thought she said something like, "It's not you" or something. Yeah. What she said was, she said, um, she said to Nymeria, "I'm heading north. Come with me, girl." And then she looked and she's like, "No, that's not you." Basically saying, "That's not who you are now. You're that's not, not going to come with me." Yeah. That's not. Um, a lot of people are linking it up to when Ned wanted to get Arya to dress up like a, a lady and, you know, marry a, another lord or whatever. And she was like, that's not me. And people are relating it to that. Oh, thing. that makes sense then. So what, because I, I knew there was something and I was like, oh right, so she can also communicate with animals now. No, it's I just... I thought it was like no, a whole was... new fucking power she had. And I was <laughs> no, like, oh, it's, cool. It was, just, it was just her diary. Wolf. I've literally got Arps, which is Arya, but when your phone just changes it for the fuck of it. <laughs> Arts communicates with wolves when I was getting lazy later on. And then later on, she dances with them. Yeah. There we go. And that's the end of the show. So, any- that, nothing else exciting happened. There was no bloodshed or anything like that. It was Not an cool. epic battle on sea or something like that. No lesbian temptation. No knockoff Bam Margera. So. No. That's it. I actually thought his entrance was fucking badass. That is so good. Oh my god, how good is it when. <laughs> now. You're sitting there and you're watching you're watching the Spanish chick and, and the lesbo. Okay, cool. What's that? Yara. Yeah. Greyjoy Yara Greyjoy. And Yara, Yara and Alaria. Alaria. And, or Martel or... and I felt like I can't remember her name. Alaria. Alaria was trying to get Theon to join in as well. She was. I she think. absolutely was, right? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> That's what I got from it. I mean 
if I was him, I would I would have assumed that I was meant to get in there. But he's, you he's boys got that? He's he, missing he a part of his anatomy. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> so's so's Grey Worm. Yeah, but Theon's get in there and know. get double finger blast going. Uh, that, that's all he was about was the uh, the pumping. The pumping. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I don't know. His favorite toy was taken away, um, and then oh man the fucking one of the coolest entrances we've ever had in Game of Thrones when that big mouth comes down and clamps the, onto the ship the giant ship the mouth comes down boof and who, and he's standing on top of it oh it was just and genius. he's just like fucking suck a dick I'm here you're all dead you know I was actually rooting for the heel at that point I was like you're on you fucking I, I was, I was like oh my god I was like you can't have Theon Yara and Euron all survive this Without a clear like, and I couldn't see how they were getting out of it without one of them dying, and how it finished up actually makes the best sense for survival. But we'll get to that. Uh, I found this scene as exciting as it was, really hard to follow. Well, I was going to mention really? that last night. Yes, uh, the the editing for that was just like cut, 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 and because cut. it was so dark. Because my TV wasn't working that good, like I said, so I had. A- <laughs> The, the, it was, uh, the copy wasn't uh, as good. There was so, too um, many. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, there, there was too many fast cuts for you to try and. I yeah, found it easy it was, to follow. Right. Okay. Okay. Euron was fucking kicking ass, and so was Lesbo, and they were going to fight at some point. I don't know her name. See, I was sorry. Like, Yara. Yara. I don't know why it doesn't stay in. The thing for me was I've been watching Iron Fist at the moment, and I'm about halfway through. Oh, you poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking shit. It's getting better. Oh, it's shit. Have Hammy you watched said, it all? Hammy said it's the best out of the lot. Oh, Hammy can suck a dick. Have you watched it all? Which Hammy? David. Right. Oh, For the fifth sh- time. No. Right, then you can't I, I comment. I, I can't comment. I, I, where have you watched up to? Episode seven, six. I'm on. Yeah. Right, okay. I watched up to episode six. I was like, wow. This could have been all done in one episode. Wow. <laughs> so fucking boring. Anyway. I'm um, not watching it. But anyway, it's got... Uh, Colleen Wing from Iron Fist is one of the Sand Snakes. I don't know who Colleen Wing is. Well, you're not paying that much attention to it, so you can't call it. Is she, is she uh, the, the, the chick with the dojo? Yeah, right. she was one but of Just because I don't remember her fucking name. I watched it when it first came out like six months ago, you motherfucker. <laughs> um, it must be midnight. You're not allowed fed now. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, there she is. She's in this as well. This is going to be awesome. You get to see her fighting skills. And then she died. She got papped. She got choked with her own whip. That was cool. Euron kicked <clears throat> both those bitches' asses and hung them up there as a gift, as a perfect gift to Cersei. After he'd been stabbed with a poisoned blade. Apparently they had to get rid of the uh, the sands just because the fact that their storylines from the very start was failing. It was like 12 characters, or 9 characters, boiled down to 3. It was like, um, you know, Transformers the movie. Where they had to kill them all off for oh, the new the new range of toys get to come generation out. Generation one out for generation two. Generation two, yeah. two that's exactly what I was just like, no, we need to We need to streamline this motherfucker. We need to stream this. Well they've kept one of them alive. We uh, last year yeah, the hottest the, one had the short hair, right? Yeah, the one that's gonna get pinned down and everyone's gonna have a wee squirt. Last year at the uh, the Collectomania Comic Con, we actually met the girl that played uh, Obara. Aye. She's fucking gorgeous, man. She is so hot and it's, What's her name? Uh, she's the Australian lassie right. uh, Keisha Castle Hughes there we go that rolls off the tongue nicely eh? she was the one that was tempting Bron Bron mm, I think so get his heart rate going so he'd be poisoned yeah 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 it was her yeah yeah, yeah she's lovely mm. yeah but did did Euron get stabbed with a poisoned blade before he killed them how, he... long's, how long's the poison take to kick in don't know that's the question people are asking. Apparently not, because it was the one down in the the one that survived, uh, Tain, Tain, who done who does the poisoning, which is why it's actually convenient that she's been taken hostage. I think Elyria and Tain will be the gift to Cersei because yeah. they're the ones who killed um, Marcella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the poison and everything, so it was perfect. And the other two are just hanging on a ship, he was, and he's decimated the fleet. So was he lucky, or did someone tell him, <coughs> Varys, where he was going to be, where they were going to be? Just it was just when you were saying earlier. I about, never once considered that. It was just when you were saying earlier, like 
It, it did seem kind of random that he just happened to show up for that. If you look at the geography of the maps, it was very plausible that they would stumble upon them uh-huh. because he was setting out from King's Land at the same time they were sending their fleets down from wherever Dragonstone is and there was some kind of crossover. But the timings, yeah, they probably crossed paths but not at the same time, if that makes sense. But the timings of it being like that suggests spies. Oh, he's, he's having a thunk. What about, well, possibly not, but like... I was thinking, how the fuck did he know where they were? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, fuck, I need to go to the gym. Ah, uh, okay. And then that thought ended. <laughs> what, what about if, uh, you know, somehow Theon got a message out? Why would Theon even do just? Though? I know, but no. Because if that was the case, he wouldn't put he wouldn't pussy out of the boat. I'm, I'm just throwing... he would be like, ha ha, Yara, I'm in charge of the Greyjoys now with Euron. Oh, fair enough. And Euron trouble. I thought that's just why you know, obviously PTSD kicked in. And Is got Euron off the boat, going but... to going to smash Yara? You want to rape her? Nah, nah that's his that's his niece. niece. Uh huh. They're all related. Yeah, I don't yep. I don't think he's that mental. Sister sister and brother fucking this show, guys. Yeah, I don't think he's that mental though. The Lannisters, I think it would take away from the Lannisters, kind of... Yeah, I think I think the Lannisters is partly to do with keeping the bloodline pure. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's... Jesus and Preacher in the comic. I don't know about the TV series, but in the comic, Jesus is the product of his own pure bloodline. Mm-hmm. So by the time they get to him, he's... Um, well, you know when the gene pool is quite... Narrow. Yeah. Yep. He's like that, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I never that, thought about that. You could absolutely be right. The virus has tipped them off. Also, you just just when you're starting to think Daenerys has got this sorted, she suddenly lost her entire waterbound capabilities. Yeah, she's lost the Martells as well because they're not going back to collect their soldiers. They've got no way of bringing those soldiers back over. They oh, were going yeah. to collect them and bring them over. That's 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 Tyrion's plan. Instantly, almost like. Within half an hour of it being discussed, it's done. Sorry, they can all board the dragon, come back across, <laughs> take a turn. <laughs> so it's interesting that Barris is at the bottom end of the country and that um, Littlefinger is at the top end of the country. Yeah, that's a good plan. And they're both kind of speaking with the would be kings because they both know that they could never control Cersei. Yes, that's a point. So. Is it the case that they are both like, all right, fine, I'm going to go down this way and do this thing. Well, fuck it, I'm going to take the White Walkers. Right, fine. Mm-hmm. Gentleman's handshake. I'll see you. We'll see who wins. What else have we got to do? Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Now there was some. Um, was there anything else you guys want to add to this episode? Not this episode, but since I wasn't here for last week, just just an observation. How fucking terrifying was it right at the start when you saw the, the White Walkers? The Giant Walkers. Yeah, I was going to say, you saw Mags the Mighty walking past as well. Yeah, it was just mental. Holy shit. <laughs> so let, let's finish off with um, these comments on SoundCloud then. Okay, we've got a few comments on SoundCloud which I've not properly looked out, but um, I wanted to ask you this one. Um, Kesijin. Mm-hmm. suggests to us that he has a theory which would tie in with the books and that Arya's new pals will die in conjunction with the return of an old friend. Right. And Arya didn't have her pals in this new episode, so I presume that was literally an episode just to get um, them seen. Ed Sheeran in right now and them seen. Mm-hmm. But who would be the return of an old friend for Arya? Would it be... The Hound? Mm, no, because he's not going around killing people anymore. No. So who would it... I don't know. That's, that's a could it be point. the Swordsman? Because we never actually saw... No, but you never actually saw him get killed. But again, why would he... I know who you're talking about. Um, the big Italian guy. The wee Italian... Was uh, it no wee? Uh, yeah, the curly hair and the big tash. Yeah, yeah. Um, because people thought he was going to come back. Remember last season when she was fighting the girl from... Did they? Yeah, you know when she was fighting the girl from the Faceless Temple, I can't remember her name, the one oh, who'd been tormented. The nymph, or whatever. Yeah, called. and she'd been running away from her, and running away, and uh, there was a trailer where you seen a shadow, cha- like, behind Arya, 
and everyone was like, it's him, it's Santorio, or it's some kind of Antonio. Ah, Ian's looking it up, so it's fine. Uh, maybe it's him, but he would have no reason to kill them. Yeah, so unless he say like they try, all try to do a gang rape, because there's always time for a raping. Yeah, always or make time. There's always you can always make time for a raping when you're a horny dog soldier. Yep. You know? Not except on current real world, but you know. No, but in, in Game of Thrones, there's in the Game of Thrones world, there's de- it's definitely yep. there's always time for it. You know, um, there's something else I wanted to a- ask you about, but I, I think I've lost it, and I I realise it's uh, it's now ten past twelve, yep. and one of us is getting up very early, and yep. it's not me. It would be Lu- It would be you, Sirio yeah. Forel. Sirio, Sirio, yes. that's it. Oh, right here. No, no, I can't find the other bit that I wanted to ask about Kesajin's uh, comments. But we thank you for the comments. I remember at the time I read them and I was like, oh, that's fucking good. Oh, that's a good point as well, actually. Yeah, you um, saw the one that said, Johnny can suck a dick. Can you really? Like, hey, hey. You <laughs> said that? Uh, f- f- See the bit where it says comment deleted, it's comment deleted, comment <laughs> deleted. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um. <laughs> It was David to put them off. Okay, here, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's the point. Here's the point that Kesjin raised. He said he had a curious thought about the mountain um, and how he's the biggest obstacle to the death of Cersei. Uh, what if his sole purpose is to obey and protect her? And, okay, now I'm reading that wrong. Does he die when she does? Yes. And also, what does that mean in terms of the White Walker? Can he control him because he's a zombie? No, I don't think so. I think it's slightly different for the, the White Walkers compared to zombies. Uh, or he's not really a zombie, he's just... Because he died, right? He didn't die. He was close to it, but he never actually died. Right, okay. He just got healed up, patched up, fixed up, whatever, and somehow grew like two feet. He got and bigger, right? He did, he got way bigger. It's not the same actor. Eh? I don't think it's the same actor. It yet. is him. No. I, I follow Hathor. Hathor's one of the is the world's strongest man competitor. Hi, but is he still playing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I don't think he. I was. think they just put bigger lifts in his boots to make him look yeah, even better. Plus, he's... also the fact he's got all the metal on and the big Could fucking helmet will make him look much larger. But um, yeah, there's some interesting points, but keep them coming. We want to hear what your thoughts are and your and, random theories. And we'll get our summaries quicker so we can get onto these. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But it's just because we spent a lot of time doing that, and then. Mm-hmm. Well, you were about an hour late, motherfucker. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Um, yeah, I reckon you've got a good point there, thinking that Varys might have tipped them off. Somebody had to. So, I think... Or Baelish. How would he know? He wouldn't know. <sighs> okay. I think Varys is the most likely. Maybe Olena Tyrell. Because, like we said before, she wants Daenerys to fail. Yeah, but she needs her to succeed first. Yeah, this is true. And in an aggressive way. So the best person is Varys. Mm-hmm. Or the Red Woman. Like, weaken Daenerys so that Jon can... has got more of an even playing field of bartering with her. Yeah, maybe. Actually, my lady, your translation is rough. Or someone like that, was it? She says, it could be the prince or princess as the word is genderless. Oh, okay. Wait, slap it in her face. What was that bit again? The prince that was promised as a high. So he was like the, the hero before or something like that and he was prophesied to return again and they're basically saying that the word prince in that translation is actually genderless and it means prince or princess. So who killed the dragons before? How did they kill them? It was a mad king, was it not? No, he set them. Did he not set them upon people? Yeah, and, did, what? and they had to kill the dragons and kill him. The king slay, uh, yeah, but ha- dragon slayer. But how did they kill the dragons? I can't remember. He he told us in one of the he, the master told us in this episode when it was Robert. But what did he use to kill them? He didn't just go more wine and attack them with a sword, did he? He threw a wild boar at them. Yeah. <laughs> threw anyway, threw a the boar dragon at them. died a week later. <laughs> He's throwing whores. Blood poisoning, you know. Plenty more where that came from. Whores, ah. whores and boars. Whores and boars launched at them. Okay, these are the type of questions that we need to 
research or you guys can jump in and tell us because you probably all know do you want to do your sign off Okay, well, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Ian Stobie, and I'm also on Twitter at BigStobes81. And uh, since I've just started blogging on the uh, the Buff Geek podcast, dot wordpress dot com blog thingy McJiggy, David will tell you what it is later on. You can find me there too. Thanks for listening, guys. You'll find us at the Buff Geek podcast blog dot wordpress dot com. There we go. That's better. You'll find me at D Stobie. You'll find me on there. Just yeah, hit me up. You probably know me already. Over to you, big man. Okay, I want to thank our sponsors for this podcast and every one of our podcasts, Alpha Fitness, and the the sponsor for the podcast of July and possibly August. I'm working on it. Sante Wine Bar and Restaurant. Everyone's he's running away to the toilet. He's beating him. He's been standing up for ages. It's about to go crazy. The brothers are upset. This has been the Buff Geek Podcast. We'll see you soon. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. I'm sorry to say, guys, that um, David did piss himself in the time that Ian went to the toilet, and he's just getting cleaned up right now. And he's they're both having an argument, and Ian's like, "I didn't, I, I didn't know. I just went to the toilet. What are you gonna do?" And you know, David's upset. So, um, yeah, he's gonna be pissy pants, David, from now on. Catch you soon. <laughs>